before we start, I just want to take a moment to uh, acknowledge that this is the first meeting after the school year was completed, and I think we should all take a moment and uh, congratulate everyone who made that happen. It was by no means a certainty that we'd have in-person school uh, for all of most of this year, uh, much less, I think, with the, the smoothness and um, and effectiveness that we did. And I just want to acknowledge everyone who worked so hard to do that. And it's literally everyone. It was, I mean, Libby and her team uh, dealing uh, with uh, a near impossible task just to, to figure out what the system would be. Uh, it was all, all the teachers uh, who went uh, above and beyond every day to, to make it happen. Uh, it was, you know, the IAs, the staff, uh, the custodians who had to, to do, I think, more than they've ever done just to keep the building clean and, and safe. Uh, you know, it was all the parents who cooperated, uh, you know, the students who did a fantastic job uh, under conditions that, um, you know, are tough for kids to, to do things like wear masks and, and comply with social distancing, but uh, we all did it. Uh, and it was everyone on this board who was, was supportive and um listened and made the right decisions and uh, uh so i'm just really really proud of the community and it was it was fantastic to have uh you know graduations for all of our schools uh last week um in person and um yeah yeah just uh just a a wonderful end to a very difficult year that that we pulled through i think in a, a fantastic fashion so let's just take a, a moment and, and recognize that and uh, yeah, give thanks to everyone who made it happen. Um, so the first uh, first order of business is uh, public comment. Um, so uh, the way we usually do this is there's a participant uh, bar or participant button down at the bottom of the screen uh, where you can, if you press on the participant button the bar pops up and you can raise your hand um, uh, and if that if you have difficulty with that function please just go ahead and uh, raise your hand um, physically uh, so I can I can see it uh, but um, looks like we have one person e GMR is the the name um, so go ahead and please please introduce yourself um, for the camera. Hi, my name is Adisa Gonzalez Rabilla. I oh, I thought that was you, but you're <laughs> should have changed that. Okay. I just wanted to thank you all for the time and dedication that you give our district. Um, it's extremely commendable. And I would also like to encourage you to continue sharing opinions and ideas as well as questioning each other. Because to me, the true value in the board is the diversity in your perspectives. So thank you so much. Thanks, Adisa. Um, any other uh, comments? Okay, great. Let's um, let's move on to the consent agenda, uh, which had a few items added. Uh, oh, roll call, thank you. Um, Jill. Oh, you know what? We don't need to do roll call anymore. We are done with, with special, we, we are done with the special. So we have, since, since we have a physical vacation, we actually do not need to do roll call and we can just do voice, I and nays. So we're done with that. But thank you for the reminder. Um, but now that we're, we're physically uh, out of the emergency um, requirements, even though we're on Zoom, we're technically physically at the library. Thank you, Mia um, and Jill. Uh, so, um, uh, so we can we don't have to do that anymore. Um, I, I will just call out the members that are here. We have Jill, Amanda, Emma, Kristen, Mia, Andrew, Jerry, and Anakin. So it looks like uh, a pullback. Um, Andrew. 
Just really quickly, is the plan for next meeting to be all in person? Uh, let me talk with Libby about that. I uh, I think it depends on uh, what the custodial situation is. Um, I think because our school year technically ends June 30th, um, I, I'm not, and June 30th is, is that day, I'm not sure we're gonna be fully equipped from a custodial standpoint to be all in person, but we at least need a, we're gonna need a physical location. So someone will have to be at the library, but yeah, it might be all of us. Okay, thank you. And I wanna, and, I, and I, I'd love to get, I'd love to continue the Zoom option um, for the public and, and talking with Libby about how to get some sort of screen so we continue to have um, participation for people who can't make it to the high school. Great. Um, so the, the consent agenda, um, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda uh, with the items that Anna added to it, which, um, which include the, uh, I think it's the warrant and a few new hires. Um, so motion to approve the consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. I'll second it. It was Jill and Anna getting a tie. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? We can, we can say it all at once. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. The ayes have it. Um, So now moving on to discussion, um, and mostly want to talk, uh, discussion is future board trainings and then equity committee update. Uh, also in future, around future board trainings, I also want to talk about ways to make the agenda um, more of an involved process. The proposal I have is that uh, we do three things. Uh, we include then the next agenda in the current meeting packet so people can see a draft agenda for the meeting one ahead with a link to the the calendar the planning calendar um that Libby and I populate so you can see not just so you can you know go to that link and see you know several meetings ahead and kind of see what's being discussed um and then just have uh, have that be an item we can either pull out of the consent agenda if people want to comment on either the next agenda, especially as it relates to future agendas, like, you know, when are we going to talk about this, or there's no way we can talk about all three of those things at the next meeting, can we spread them out, or I see that we're talking about this in, you know, three meetings, I really think we need to talk about it next meeting, and maybe we can move this other item back. So have some discussion about the agenda at the beginning of meetings. Uh, and then of course, additionally, um, you know, you can always email with agenda items so we can, you know, have discussions about the agenda beforehand, but, but to have some dedicated time in the meeting to talk about certainly the next agenda kind of as it relates to future agendas. And I think that'll get easy too, as we get into future board trainings, which part of which will be goal setting. So, um, would love thoughts on that as we kind of go into the next discussion. And then for view, future board trainings, um, you know, we've had uh, several. Um, I think we definitely need, need more. Um, you know, I just want to acknowledge, I think we have a, a super talented board. I think we have people who are by and large have similar visions for the district. Uh, but with a lot of, of new folks, um, I kind of, I don't know, maybe I'm aging myself, but uh, I kind of think of that 
series from the like late 70s and early 80s, um, you know, the greatest American hero, uh, where this guy found a a suit that gave him superpowers, but there was no real instruction manual. So the whole the whole series was about him trying to like figure out what it actually did. Um, and I kind of feel that that as a board, we're we're in a similar place. Um, so so I think we need to spend some time kind of you know figuring that out and um, and also I think we you know the, I think we also have to do it while we you know make decisions and, and kind of operate within that. Um, so we've done you know we've done some VSBA training because I think I've given useful information, but I also the consensus that I've gotten just from talking to everyone is that we we need something different particularly around kind of communication and trust issues. Uh, I think we made some progress with Nathan on that, and we certainly um, have an invitation uh, from Nathan to continue working on that with kind of the next building being, I think, goals and priorities, which I think would also help with the agenda and some focus. Um, uh, one, one training I would like to advocate for, even though it's not super sexy, is uh, Pietro Lin, who's our lawyer, um, does a very good training on roles and responsibilities, kind of from a just baseline, you know, here's what is required of us to do, and here are how we have to navigate certain situations. Um, you know, it's a little black letter, but I think it's it's a valuable training, and he's he's got some availability in July. Uh, and then I'm open to, you know, other suggestions. I know Emma has had some suggestions. Uh, Ahmad has had some suggestions. Uh, Mia's had some suggestions. I think, you know, Andrew has some thoughts. So um, would love some suggestions about that and kind of how we can space it. Because I think, you know, summer and early fall might be a good time to do that. Because uh, once we get into budget season, we're going to be, be pretty busy. So if we can come into budget season, I think, you know, having done a couple helpful trainings, um, done some work building trust, and then also I think particularly thinking about goal settings and priorities uh, to help guide that budget discussion in fall, uh, that would be a kind of summer well spent. So I will stop talking and just open open the floor up to, to ideas, and then we can just kind of have consensus about um, what what we want to do, and and then just assign some some reach out. Emma. So one of the suggestions I had when I spoke to Jim um, one on one was potentially doing some restorative justice training. Um, I think that it's something that our district has really invested in. It's something that the school safety committee made a lot of recommendations around. And one of the recommendations from the school safety committee was that the board learn restorative justice practices so that we can sort of resolve any any internal issues that arise within the board dynamics using those strategies. Um, so that would be something I would I would recommend. I do like the idea of setting priorities with Nathan as well. And I think if we do something with Pietro, it might be nice to come with a couple of concrete examples of like things that we might want to accomplish. And then he could tell us how to accomplish those goals within the bounds of the role of the school board. Yep. Okay, thanks. Um, others? And, and Emma, just following up on that, do you have, uh, I know there's the Center for Restorative Justice in Montpelier, and I think they've got offices elsewhere. Do you have contacts you could reach out to to kind of get a sense of what that would entail and availability, et cetera? Yeah, it's the Montpelier Community Justice Center. Um, and I do have the director's number somewhere, which I can either forward to you or, or start an email thread with you on it. That'd be great. Okay. I'm doing a training. Um, a train the trainer actually program from August 2nd to the 5th. Uh, if anybody's interested, there's still spots on it. Uh, and it's from the Community Justice, Restorative Justice Center in uh, Fairleigh, Vermont. This is a three day, um, 24 hour training. It's a uh, three full days. And 
and and I think they there's only a few that are doing just like two hour trainings, not that many, and that doesn't like cover a lot. So if there, if people are interested in this training, I will send it. But it's yeah, if you could send a link to the board, that would be great. What were the dates you said? I think the second to the fifth. Is oh, that the right? The second to the fifth. Yeah, it's in a, at the Lake Moria Resort. Can you all hear me? Okay. Yep. Oh, wait, now I can't. I can hear you. Yeah. you oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> Jill and I are just trying to make sure we don't blow anybody's earbuds, ears out. Um, I, I just wanted to second the um, Emma's recommendation for restorative justice training. And I think it's because my understanding from you know what people shared with us as we were learning about it in the school safety committee was that the way that it that in order for restorative justice practices to work when there is a conflict is to you to to build build that foundation of um, strong communication and trust. So my hope is that 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 that's what would be involved also in a training like that is that it wouldn't just be about like okay so when you have a, an issue that arises here's how you handle it but that also we start at the very very beginning with the trainers and the facilitation. And I realize that. Nathan has started that process for us. And I think that it, for that to take hold, that's obviously a lot more than just one training or um, one retreat. Uh, so yeah, I think just bringing in the support for establishing strong communication practices so that we are starting out with, um, with uh, working from a place of, of um, trusting each other so that we have that foundation to work from when, when a conflict arises. Great, thanks, Mia. Uh, Anakin? Thanks, Jim. Um, yeah, I do like the idea for, for training and all the uh, the things that you guys have mentioned. They, they seem like from different, they, they seem to cover the different aspects. So uh, like the Pietro thing that you mentioned, you know, it, it seemed like that was a, that was a different angle uh, for the training as the restorative justice or what Amanda mentioned. Um, but in general, I do like the idea of training. One thing I do wanted to uh, kind of mention is the timing of this. Unfortunately, I've got a couple of things uh, that I won't be here um, in, in town, so I'll be, I'll, I'll be traveling. And the first week of August is one of them. Um, so, and then July, and then this is one more. So I, we need to, I guess, if we need to fix up the dates, we need to fix it sooner and then kind of figure out what works out for all of this. No, that's a good comment. And one thing we could do is, um, you know, what we, we can communicate schedule by email. So if, if we could just start an email chain with everyone on the board, just putting the times that you know you're going to be be out of uh, out of town, and then that can help us pick some dates. And then we could, I mean, a couple of things. We can obviously take this into to you know the fall as well. Uh, and I think kind of going to Mia's point that you know this is. This is not a one and done thing. This is something I think that requires constant work and um, kind of constant look back. So uh, yeah, I think we want to I think talk about trainings you know throughout the year and, and keep keep revisiting the you know the same issues. Yeah. Just on the scheduling note, <clears throat> my understanding is that for something that is truly a training, it wouldn't we wouldn't necessarily have to do it at a board meeting. It's something no. we could schedule at a different time um, because it's not a place where we would be making any decisions or yeah. you know following those kinds of procedures. Yeah, no, exactly. But, and it's also just, something we don't have to do. Just something to consider. Yes. Jill? Is that a hand or no? Okay. I'm not in the audio visual field for a reason. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Amanda? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it will be helpful um, for me at least to have like just like the vision of what each of the trainings, like so, like which trainings we've had together as a board for the past, you know, whatever months that which ones weren't um, like not all of us together. I would love to have um, like a training on the budget. Um, that would be really helpful to like really understand the budget, really understand how to read um, the, the, the quarterly reports that we get um, and like uh, put those attached to kind of like those board roles. And like, um, so that, 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 that would be really helpful for me. I would love a training on um, the roles of each of the committees, for example, the negotiations committee, like what, what do they really entail? Like, how does that happen? Like, who are the stakeholders in that process? And really understanding the role of each of the standing committees. So, yeah. and how the decisions get flow into the full board. Um, that will be really helpful. And, and I would say um, a priority just to get everybody kind of like on the same because so so that and then um, with the work with Nathan around the values and principles that we do have a vision of that communication structure and also but also like you know we, we and I talked to Jim a little bit about this like having like a real analysis of all those implicit bias trainings that were done and uh, the the documents that we discussed or that you guys discussed before I, got, I went came on board um, with Mara and you know like how that fits into the work of equity and what else is needed but, but really to do an evaluation of um, of what of the whys those trainings are done and how that actually relates to the actual work and the triple down in the communication structure so I think um, having that and just like for me just like I, I, um, I think like vision is like okay why why are we doing these trainings where are they taking us and what 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 is the after thought of that like what is the result of it like what are we gaining from it um i think it's really important of to become effective andrew yeah so i just have some thoughts um on what a couple of amanda's suggestions uh, because I've served on the finance and negotiation committee since I've been on the board. And I was thinking in terms of the quarterly reports, um, I think we have a couple of options for that. One is at our next finance committee meeting, anybody who wants to attend could attend and Grant uh, walks us through those reports each time. Um, so that's a, that's a really good opportunity, any board members welcome to attend those committee meetings. It's not just, you know, the finance committee or the people who need to be there um, to review and ask these questions. But if you're, if anybody's interested, I welcome you to, to come. And in the past, we have had some members come to other committee meetings. I'd say the, the one exception to, to that role is typically the negotiations because we have a group that's negotiating and the groups like to know each other. Um, so if you want to be involved in that process, doing that from the beginning makes sense. But even what I, I feel like any committee I've ever been on, other than the go negotiations committees, any board member has been welcome to attend. And I've attended some other committees as well. So that might make sense. And the next, the next quarterly report will also be the year end report. So it'll be a nice overview of how our expenditures came out in relation to our budget, which is, and you know, um, it, that'll that'll probably be helpful. We could even, another thought is we could go from that finance committee meeting and we could carve out part of the board meeting for it, but I really feel like we have so much on our plate right now. Maybe if anybody's interested, just come to that next finance committee meeting and let, uh, let the committee and let Grant know in advance if you have any specific questions. I generally send Grant like five to 10 questions ahead of time so that he can look into issues and, and be prepared to respond to them at the committee meeting. So um, 
that's that's a thought for those quarterly reports. For the budget, I feel like at the outset of our budget season, because we're going to be heading into a long budget season, that would be a great time for training on that. And also, I think we might want to consider bringing in someone either from the tax department or from the joint fiscal office to explain how property tax rates work, because we talked a bit about that last year, and it's really complex. Um, there's some folks on Jill's team um, that could be good. There's there's some other folks at the tax department that could be be good that work with her team. So that that might be something that that we could request um, because I think better understanding how those things work will will help us all. Um, those I have I, I also have a thought on negotiations, but I wanted to stop on the finance and budgeting. Does that do those sound like reasonable approaches in terms of coming up to speed on those issues? Yeah, I, th I think the idea of a budget um, presentation prior to budget season makes a lot of sense, especially with so many new members and so many questions. Emma. Just yeah. high-fiving my own hand there. Um, so, uh, yes, I like that idea. I just, I, I think that it might be nice to carve out a little bit on, on an agenda, like maybe make sure that Amanda and myself, and I don't know if Mia's interested, but maybe Kristen, like all of us newer members, like find out a date that we're all able to be at one of your finance committee meetings and then like actually make it an agenda item to like walk us through. Sure. I mean, I like he, that idea. I think that's great. Yeah. And he just so you know, he will he walks through every single time the different the different lines like okay. and unless we say, you know, we got it. We don't have any questions. Let's go like that is his modus operandi is to to do that. So, um, yeah, let's let's look at that because I guess it will be the summertime. So another option is if that didn't work, maybe the next one, they're on a quarterly basis, but we could also have like an ad hoc one just for this purpose as well. Um, I also wanted to put in a plug, just you said that any board member is welcome to come, but also any member of the public, right? Is oh yeah, they're totally open to the public. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we have gotten some members of the public at them, but it's, it's not often. Amanda? Oh. I forgot. <laughs> oh, I I just like thinking that Grant when when is he leaving? Is he leaving this year or next year? Next year, next year. He has one more this, year. This, this is his last year. year. Okay. Just like mm -hmm. to think about transition and like what that looks like for future people that will be doing these reports. Mm -hmm. I think like it's really important to make sure that we have a, that transition plan in place if it hasn't started. And and I. I, I agree with that. And also, I, I have to grant a bunch of kudos because when I first came on, I asked for that financial report, the quarterly report, to be expanded. And it's about double the size now with information that I think I'm the main person who's requested. So um, I'm, I'm thankful for that. Like you can see what our, our debt obligations are over time and things like that. So thanks to Grant for that. And then the other thing I was going to say on negotiations, I, I do want to just say, the different the the negotiations with the different bargaining units are very different, and um, the contracts are a bit different, and the ground rules used are a bit different, and the issues that we address each time are a bit different. So typically, what we've done in the past is when we're in the middle of negotiations, we have like monthly executive session meetings with the board to walk through. These are the issues that are on the table. Th this is what we're talking about. So what I'd suggest is because we thankfully do not have a negotiation next year, which we've literally had negotiations every year for the past three years, it's been nuts. Um, what I would suggest on negotiations is that when we're heading into a negotiation at the outset of that, that we use that as a time for like a primer. And then when we're in these executive sessions talking about proposals that are on the table that's a really good time to ask any number of questions with regard to those issues those ground rules that time around because it it varies the nature of these negotiations do vary even with the same union from year to year and 
who's on that negotiation team um, might change that dynamic a little bit. Yeah, and there's no better way to learn about the negotiations committee than to be on it. Yes. I was just going to say uh, that that's one one thing I, 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 you know, kind of was forced into it. Uh, not forced into it, but I forced myself into it. Got into the negotiations committee without knowing anything. And, and you know, first couple of meetings, I was just fumbling. But you, know, you, you start picking up things. Uh, so that's a, that's a great way to learn. Joe, I see your hand is up. Sorry, I just like to, sorry, can I? <laughs> it's just like, yeah. so what I'm thinking is not like the little details of what happens, but how I think it just be, it doesn't have to be a training, but a conversation around the committee's role and how it trickles down into the board decision, right? Like. So if things are negotiated and then we decide on things, um, so that hot, what what are the parameters in there of the questioning and like the like that we have to know that we should know, right? Like because I feel like if like we want to give committees the empowerment to be able to like come to the board and say this is what we are recommending. I'm just making this up, um, and then and then like making sure that we know the information that we need to make informed decisions, um, that we're able to ask the questions that we need to. So it's, it's that conversation around how committees interact with the full board um, so that when we have this, the, the board meeting and decisions are being made in committees work in particular, because I'm gonna, I'm in the policy and equity committee that there are certain parameters that we as a group come up with that, you know, give a way for that communication structure to flow. Yeah, and I, I guess I should say, uh, having done this three times, my first and second time doing this, I was not as senior of a board member, but I did play the main point person on uh, the teacher negotiations. And there were some issues that, you know, I wanted to go one way, and the board ultimately voted to go another way on. And I respected that. And I, I'm just giving you an example of how this dynamic plays out. And, you know, it was the, the will of the board to do this. It made our negotiations more difficult. Um, and, you know, we just had to represent the board as the negotiations committee. Ultimately, when considering various provisions, we, we bring those to the board, say, is the board okay with this? How does the board feel with this, about this? And, um, if there's an issue with something that we think might be easier to negotiate and the board says, no, we, we don't want to go that route. We want to go this other route. We honor that we're representing the board. That's really the role of that committee is to represent the board. That committee does not act on its own. So I just want to put that out there. And no committee ultimately acts on its own. I mean, yes. That's a good point. Yeah. Really good point. Exactly. Yeah. And like the finance committee, I think I made, I brought this up last time. The finance committee doesn't make any decisions with regard to the finances of the district. It's simply to be better informed. So if questions come up, we can explain things. Um, so I, Kristen, I see your hand has come up a couple of times physically and Jill has had her hand up virtually. Um, I'm gonna go with Jill and then Kristen. Yeah, even though I'm in the school. Yes. Um, I, I did want to just echo, I, I appreciate the idea of the agenda development. Like I have, I, I kind of want to update all of you on the Center Vermont Career Center stuff. And that would be a great example of like, well, when's, when do we have a lighter, huh, a lighter board agenda where I could, where I could throw that in there? Because I'm excited to fill you guys in. Um, I think we're still sort of, I don't know about anybody else. I feel like we're still sort of trying to run before we've walked. And I actually would, I, I, I really like how Amanda explained, like I would like the context of some of our decisions because I, I think even like a flow chart or something that sort of articulates um, the overall budget and the pieces that are fixed costs that don't require a lot of our discussion versus then we have things that come before the board like a track or a project or a consultant and we and we throw around terms like fund balance and capital fund and a bond vote and I and I and I understand what those things are to some extent but I still feel like I have no way how to react to things like the track 
as I'm just using that as a latest example because I don't have the context of how much flexibility we have or, and as Amanda has pointed out too, like we, we had a few folks over the last year come before the board with things we're really excited about. So have we kept track of that kind of wish list of things? And also sort of looking ahead, we're going to start having our facilities meeting again. And there might be short-term investments, especially with like ESSER money, that in the long term could actually free up funds for other things. But I'm still feeling like I don't think it would hurt to like really step back and sort of have a fundamental conversation about how the budget works and where we have flexibility versus what are fixed costs, if that makes any sense. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. Uh, Kristen. Thanks. Yeah, the reason I'm raising my human hand is I actually can't find the button. I have the participants bar up and this happened to me last meeting. So if anybody wants to, I, I'm a I'm a user of Google Meet all day at work. So um, Zoom is not my forte platform. But um, yeah, this is connected to um, roles and responsibilities. And I think we've talked about this a bit, but I'm particularly interested in, in getting trained up on kind of our role as um, representative of of the of the community and how like what is what is really best practice community engagement look like um and just really exploring like that part of our charge and our role as as board members so would that just be like a broader communications training like how to communicate as a board member both you know with your constituents from your constituents to the administration I mean, not, not like communication, but like communication as a, you know, when, when I'm talking to yeah. residents I would of be, my town, what do I say? And when they ask me questions, where do I go? Type of thing. Yeah, that would be great. And I think with a specific focus too, yeah, on the just yeah. what is kind of best practice for in, engaging, you know, there's, there's the community member coming to you, but then there's also the practice of going to community members. Um, you know, I think part of the, the goal there is to, how can we best, you know, hear voices that we don't come, that don't commonly come to the table, and how can we do our best to engage those? Great, Emma. I just want to echo what Kristen's saying, and and not as more of like a detailed training on like how to talk to the, the community, but about what has the board been doing historically to engage community members and what are our best practices as a board um, for engaging community members. I was just reading the memorandum tonight about now that we're going back to regular open meeting law and like posting, you know, just little things like where do we post our our agendas so that if anyone asks me, I'm knowledgeable about that, um, that sort of that sort of thing. I think it kind of relates to what we were talking about um, a training with Nathan, like maybe identifying certain priority priorities and um, you know visions for the board. And I think it sounds like Kristen, I, if I may, over the course of the last few weeks, when you've been on the board, it seems like community input and like stakeholder engagement is a is a priority for you. Yeah, I think especially as we're approaching this time that we're going to be, um, you know, launching a visioning process that's going to include, um, you know, the really thinking about how Roxbury and RBS sort of, you know, fits in. I think that that piece feels really important to possibly even precede the starting of that process, if possible. Yeah, that obviously is going to be a process with a lot of community outreach and community engagement. Um, Amada? So, it, like, I think in community uh, uh, engagement, uh, having a 360 view, not only about like, here's how we do it, but, you know, so like taking a little bit of pieces of dialogue conversation around what has been best practice and where do we want to go from? Like, you know, so I'm thinking like, how do we involve, you know, people that speak different languages and how do we, you know, like, so I think that 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 could lead to a policy around community engagement and around like, how do we really listen from the community that we're accountable to? So not so much. So I would think like when I say 360s, like here's, the training of how we do it and then being able to have the conversation of what is working and what is not 
working and how to move that to create our best practices at board of like what we want to see community engagement look like within our roles and responsibilities. Any other comments? So what I've heard so far is um, share on race practice on community engagement with kind of a look back, look forward approach. Um, a budget training, which I think will be a great thing to proceed our budget process. And I think with so many new people on the board makes a ton of sense because uh, that that is a Byzantine process. Uh, and I think just laying out what it looks like beforehand would make a lot of sense. Uh, restorative justice training and Emma is going to send along some contact information. Um, setting priorities and goals, kind of furthering the work with Nathan. Uh, roles and responsibilities uh, with Pietro. Um, and he might be able to talk about some some best kind of practices with a lens towards um, legal obligations as well. Uh, Amanda is doing a train the trainer at Lake Mori, August 2nd through 5th uh, for folks to sign up for if they're interested. Um, uh, we also want to uh, do I think a deep dive and I'm not sure if this, this is probably not trainings, but there's probably some space to put on the agenda of what our various committees do and how those committees interact with the board in terms of decision making points. Um, and what else am I missing and then obviously you know on communications equity trust etc uh these are trainings that we want to kind of keep going because you know this is work that we never we never will fully arrive at so we want to obviously keep keep working on it keep evolving um another thing that i will throw in just it's, it's a little further down the road but um there is an a meeting of all the state's boards that occurs in November that I think might be great for as many folks to attend as possible. I think that's also at Lake Maury, uh, but it's two days and it's it's a it's a peek into what other boards in the states are doing, the issues they're facing, um, a lot of presentations. I think it's just a, it's a good, I've done it a couple of times. It's, it's a, it's a great, uh, just a great look at, the issues other boards are facing and how they're dealing with with various issues. Um, and then obviously we want to keep this conversation going, but that seems to be with with everything else we have going on, that seems to be a fair amount for the next few months um, if we can get all of these things on the calendar. Any other comments, questions? observations excellent well i think we can actually make good on our short agenda um and we've had some long meetings so uh i think we're we're due a short meeting that especially with the summer upon us so um do i have a motion to adjourn we have the equity conversation Oh, we do have the equity conversation. Thank you. I knew that was too easy. Um, equity committee update. Uh, uh, is that Mia? Uh, Sorry, I think I, I can kick us off. Yeah. Um, so the equity committee has been working on establishing what our charge is. And then in the process of doing so, we also started to piece together what it might look like for us to gather the information that we think we would need in order to be able to set some some goals that for around um, the work we would do to advance equity at the at the board level. Um, so that's why um, uh, Anna included the minutes from the May 11th meeting of the equity committee because that's where we 
um, recorded what our draft charge is. And then just to bring everybody up to speed, um, Jim reached out after reading this and said, oh, hey, standing committees of the board don't actually need a charge. <laughs> um, so, you know, this is uh, a little bit more, I, I still think this warrants, um, as I said to Jim, uh, some good discussion from the board to say to, because, you know, this is a committee of the board to get the input from you all to say, yes, we think this is generally what we imagined the equity committee of the, of the board doing, um, and, or no, or have you thought about this or whatever. So that's the first part of what we wanted to, to get your input on. And the second part was, that kind of draft timeline or, or actions that we want to take to gather input from the community. And then the third one um, was about the survey that we're that we think will be part of that process of input gathering from the community. Um, we are thinking we really want to make sure to have it translated um, so that uh, uh, we can make sure to be gathering um, feedback and perspectives from those of us who uh, in our community who are not um, native English speakers. And uh, so as we think about that, we wanted to put it out on the radar to, to potentially use some of the money from the board line item in the budget to do so. So those are the three things. Um, no big decisions need to be made. We're just, we just wanted to hear what your, your thoughts are. And um, Amanda, Kristen, did, did I miss anything? I think that's a good start. Andrew? So I have some questions. I'm gonna start with the, the initial, I, I appreciate the charge. We're gonna talk about that with the facilities committee too because it helps us stay focused. Um, it's like, what are we doing? Uh, I was wondering, my question here is, do you guys have some examples of things that you're thinking about already in terms of projects, services, work. Uh, I have to imagine that this survey, obviously, I what are, what are you thinking about in terms of that? Like, can you, can you give us some tangibles? And if it's at the nascent stages of this and you're like just formulating thoughts on this, that's fine too. I can, I can give it a shot. So yeah, I think the two mechanisms for just outreach, I mean, really that we've been talking about, I, I feel like we've been primarily focusing on how do we reach community member or how do we reach you know families, caregivers of students in the district and try to gauge um, their experience in the district in terms of in terms of inclusion and representation. And so kind of the two mechanisms to try and gauge that that we've discussed is um, both a survey um, that would go out to families and caregivers. And then we have also kicked around the idea of leading some focus groups um, with groups um, that may particularly be affected by, um, you know, lack of inclusion or representation um, within the district. Thank you. That was, that's helpful. Um, so my, I, I sent Mia some like, just like budget type questions with regard to budget proposals, just like general considerations that would be helpful. But I, I have a, a larger thought here, which is I'm curious to know many schools and I'm pretty certain I've, I've seen I know our school has recruited for these positions, at least at part-time FTEs before. I'm curious to know what resources our district already has for interpretation, because for it's, it's not just non-native English speakers, it's really those non-native English speakers who, who, who need and, and want uh, interpretation in another language. And I have to imagine and maybe I'm wrong, I guess I'm curious to know, and Libby's not here right now, So, but I, I guess I'm curious to know what resources does the district already have for this because we should be providing these services um, for a range of communications. And that would then lead me to raise the question of, can we leverage those existing resources for this exercise once we have a survey generally fleshed out? Um, that's, you know, that's my 5,000 foot level 
question on I this. Some of this. Yeah, I, I can answer some of those questions. Um, one is that I know, I know because I am um, as part of the U.S. Caregivers Alliance that some of the questions we've been having about how to like engage our um, our you know families that don't speak. So there, there's we have over 20 languages that we speak at UES alone. Um, only four languages are translated into when families require interpretation. But that doesn't mean that all of our communication that goes out is translated into those four languages. Um, so, and, and this is because I know firsthand because I uh, talked to Silvia who leads the ELO department two years ago. So this might have changed since the time I started those conversations with her in 2019. Um, and so I, I actually brought this when COVID because other districts are doing a really good job. They do have a bigger population of, of uh, refugee communities. Burlington School District is um, really an exemplary uh, district that has done this way you know above and beyond so they have for example all the superintendent calls are being um are are like the robocalls are sent out in the different languages that the families speak um you know and that that was part of the, the uh, multilingual task force that was created at the beginning of the pandemic where there was this need to disseminate the COVID-19 information so um they created they, there's a YouTube channel where all the governor press conferences were translated into the 10 different languages that our community of refugees in Vermont speak um, and immigrants. And, and then uh, the district took some of those audio files and then translated them. Granted that they do have community liaisons that speak those languages as well um, to support those students. So they do have you know, a system in place because of the population that they have, which is something I would love to see here around the language access, what we call language justice. Um, the, we know that we have some families of um, that, for example, one parent speaks English, the second parent doesn't, so they don't require, um, they don't ask for interpretation, but most of the time the, the person that stays home is the one that doesn't speak the language, um, and so, or the whose English is the second language. So, you know, being able to like really in terms of equity and like when we're thinking about this, that was the, um, that we were talking in the committee, it's like ideally equity is not like you have to, you don't have to request it, you just get it because there's a lot of cultural implications around people asking to have, you know, the district to be, you know, translate this for me. Um, and, and so and, and sometimes those translations get lost. So there's you know lots of that's of lots of things that happens. So I think um, I think we could do a lot better as a district and I think this equity committee like kind of leading a little bit on that. So there's resources. We have two organizations in the state, UCR, USCRI, who um, is the organization that places our refugees in our state. And then we have ALB, which is Association of Africans Living in Vermont. Two of the, both of them have um, translation services where you can interpret, but you can also, and, and, and most of the folks that do the translations are folks from the community. Um, I, we do have in the district telehealth, tele whatever it's called, it's an organization. So if they do need it, they have, um, either voice call or like through Zoom, like some of the interpretation system, but those people are not from here. So sometimes uh, my experience is that the translations is not very good sometimes, so it gets lost, but, um, but I know that we do have that service because it is required for us to translate when families request that if by law, they have to, we have to translate um, when, when people request it. But if they don't, then they don't, just don't get the information. Yeah, so I, I think my my like head goes to, you know, this could be an opportunity for us to assess, um, you know, and 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 I'd want to touch base with with Libby and probably Mike Barry probably has put some thought into this, I have to imagine. 
I, I'd be curious to know, you know, how are we providing for those those needs right now? Um, it sounds like you have a good finger on the pulse of where we were a couple of years ago, Amanda. It might have not changed since then. And then the question is, you know, how, beyond like just appropriating money for this issue, I this this one survey, I'm thinking about. Well, if, if we if there are people who need this for this survey, they they need it for for other um, communications as well. And so um, that it would be it would be nice if we we could we could get a better feel for that need out of this process and figure out, you know, I, I guess to me that's, I'm, I'm thinking about like even beyond this survey, getting a feel for the, for that need and uh, providing for it. So I just want to put that out there. Emma? I think it's going to be great to have an equity committee that's um, helping the rest of the board sort of move forward on some of these issues and and not having to carve out so much time during our school board meetings that it does feel like an issue that's ready for its own committee. Um, and I know that the policy committee a couple of times could have used the help of an equity committee to, you know, for example, we, I think Amanda, you were on the policy committee at the time we were talking about the homeless um, student policy and it was just it got tricky really fast and it, it would have been great to have an equity committee to sort of run that policy by and andrew you were talking about that in our policy committee strategy of like some of the policies might be run by the finance committee or some of them might be run by the equity committee or some might be run by the facility committee so i think it's going to be great um just quickly because it's on my mind one really easy way to add accessibility to these meetings is to put on the live transcript option. So I could stay on after the meeting ends tonight to help um, Anna, if she's still on, or Jim learn how to do that. But it's like super simple and it allows people who are, who are hearing impaired to understand and listen and participate in our meetings. That's a great suggestion. Um, Jerry. I think um, Emma covered it. I was going to say if we're going to um, interpret, we should also think about people who are um, deaf or blind. Um, the other thing is, though, I really feel like we're getting into solutions before we um, have data. So I would hope that the first step would be gathering data so we know what the size of things are and how to um yeah just just so we know how to scope things can can you give a, an example of how it feels like we're are you talking about the equity committee specifically moving into solutions without having data yeah just everything like for example i mean i don't know what the um, demographics are in Montpelier or Roxbury, frankly. Um, so it would just, it would be nice to know um, for some of the larger issues we're, we're tackling um, just what, what, what is the scope of the, of the different communities? What are their needs um, before we solve? That's it. It's just part of the data collection. Uh, yeah, that's that's exactly where our heads are at too, which is um, why we thought we wanted to take pretty much the whole rest of this year to gather input. Yep. Following up just on Jerry's request about about data, like can somebody just enlighten me as to the process of how we go about getting kind of like demographic data or what does exist and kind of what the district's current process is for collecting that information and, and how it, it could become available to us if it's helpful? Um, I, I think the question is best to Libby. I, I think we might want to put on the agenda item at some point, probably soon, 
Uh, it looks like there's a hunger for data about demographics in our district and um, kind of what we know. Uh, and I think that might be a thing that the, the board could discuss at another meeting, another meeting soon. Um, and yeah, maybe put a request in to the administration to, uh, you know, I know Burlington has a, some reports that do a very good job of kind of looking at the data that that's available, both the community data and the school data and performance data, um, and putting that out in, in report form. I think that's that's something that we have a hunger for. I mean, Burlington's Burlington is a larger and more diverse community, so I think they are going to have fewer problems running against the, uh, up against things like FERPA. But I think we could do we could ask the administration to do the best they could with the data we have, uh, and then explain uh, where the limitations are and and you know where the areas are where you know the data samples, for instance, are are too small to. Um, give the type of information that could potentially be revealing. Uh, Jerry, is that an old hand or? Um, well, yeah, I guess just to follow up. Um, yeah, because let's say, and I don't know, if, I, I have no idea if this is true or not, but let's say there is not a single deaf person in the Montpelier area who's who has any interest in school board stuff. We wouldn't want to you know, we also have to think about the taxpayers. So I just, I want to be really sensitive about, um, you know, the money we spend and whether if it's needed, of course, but if it's not needed, you know, I'm sure we will, we just need data to make those decisions. And then that could change at any time. So how do we continue kind of collecting that information? Joe. Yeah, there's definitely um, twice a year headcounts that the schools have to collect and report up to the Vermont AOE that then go to the federal AOE. Um, I think some of it might get suppressed by small end numbers because there might be smaller numbers, but I think at the very least they do have to collect that and I think there would be some valuable stuff in there. But I'm also just wondering, this might be a good time of year if the forms that, that parents fill out each year for their kids enrollment for the fall, if there was a place that families could request their preferred um, language for materials to be communicated to them. I mean, at least for the principals to have that each year and, and be able to provide that. I think it doesn't even have to be something that gets reported out if it's too small of a number, but just so the principals have that and can sort of proactively know that and prepare that, that might be a way to capture what families need proactively rather than waiting for them to ask for it. Uh, Mia. Thank you. Um, I was just, I'm just noting the time and wanting to make sure that we kind of stay on track for the purpose of, of this conversation. I, I, I think Jim, you saying like, let's, let's um, put on a future agenda, a discussion about data is a really great idea. So I just wanted to bring us back to, so that we aren't um, going down too many tangents tonight um, and staying around too late, just um, opening it back up to the board for any input on the charge or mission statement, however we want to think about um, this for the equity committee, and then any other thoughts on the the timeline that we put forth uh, and the actions we think we're going to take to to gather community input for the rest of the year. Jerry, did you have your hand Andrew? up already? Okay. I think it's Andrew. I, mine's an old hand. I I mean, I, I think I think this is great. I appreciate this update. I, I appreciate I appreciate the focus. You're here. muted, Andrew. Oh, never mind. Oh. Maybe not. No, I can hear him. Okay, that was me. Maybe you're muted. <laughs> you're muted your audio. Or muting and unmuting. Um, I I think I think you know when when you're heading in to as you're working on the survey and pulling the survey together. I think I I I just think it's worth seeing. Um, I think it's worth some some conversations with Libby, maybe Mike Barry. I don't know who else at, at our district level focuses on on some of these issues, but with regard to some of the information that we're already receiving that we might be able to use, I do think there's going to always be limitations with small numbers 
of personally identifiable data when used for school purposes. I mean, the FERPA is highly restrictive to provide student privacy. Um, and, you know, it's a civil liberties issue, frankly. The ACLU has championed around that law on a range of issues for a long time um, on a lot of good issues, really um, issues of equity, frankly. Um, and so, you know, that's that's something that we'll have to navigate. I think that's something that on the data front will, will always be something that the board will have to navigate when it's collecting information because we're a small district. It's something that happens even at a statewide level for some issues. So I just, I want to, I want to throw that out there, but I ultimately think with regard to developing a survey and everything, as I think this committee, you know, go, go do it and come to the board when, when you have a draft ready to share, I think that would, that's my thought. Amanda? I mean, I, I think the thing about equity is that we don't, you know, we, we make some decisions that is long term that is going to affect if tomorrow another person moves in and as our space becomes more diversified and um, like how it relates to people that are coming to Montpelier and living here that we really think about like long term goals. Um, I so for the climate survey, we had added some questions from this company called Panorama, who like, that's what they do is develop surveys in for schools and they have like a, a very variety of tools. Um, and me and I, I actually, I, I reached out to them and I was like, hey, can't, we're using some of your questions. Um, and I just wanna make sure that that's okay. And they say, yeah. Yes, it's open source. Everybody can use them. And um, I went to ask them what their price is. So for a mere amount of $7,250 that could be used from SR2 funds, uh, we could have a, a contract with them for 12 months uh, where they will, they could do, this is just an idea to put out there. Um, they could do all the series. They have all the service translated into about 10 languages. They'll pull out all the metrics and like develop like an analysis system of what you can do with the data um, and like think through uh, many, many, you know, schools are not in Vermont. I don't know who uses, but, you know, they're getting a lot of the questions. Say, can we use SR3 funds from this? And um, they said yes. But that, so that's like a thought of something. Um, but we, you know, we are thinking of using some other questions which are open source and we can use, but. That's also a service of um, that they're using. And again, like they already have a lot of the service translated into the different languages. And um, they're willing to come to the school board to present their tool and everything that you can do with it. And, you know, like you can use all of them. Like if you wanted to do students, me and I were talking about like surveys also, like we don't want people to get tired of service because I know that. Um, Ryan already did a surveys at UES. Um, I don't know if the other schools did. I think maybe the middle school also did a survey. So it's like, how many surveys? But it's really important for our data, for us to be able to have the data as an equity committee to really think through long-term of what the things that we could do. Great. Um... So thanks for the update. Is there anything else that you need from the board? Now, thanks for the work on this. I'm, I'm really excited to have an equity committee and uh, I agree with everyone that it's really important to inform our work and, and make sure that we stay, um, stay on top of this, this issue, which is you know, super important. Um, I think we can entertain a motion to adjourn. Well, that is a question. If you're interested in having them come to speak, or if that is a done deal for you to think about for the next meeting, but that's something like that if is of interest to have them come and do a 30 minute presentation around the tools that they use. And I'll send the link through there. Yeah, no, definitely. If you could copy Olivia on that too, that'd be great. Um, no, it sounds like um, those have a lot of great information to share. Uh, 
Do you have a motion to adjourn? No. I move to adjourn. Uh, second. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I just want to reiterate my volunteer to stay on if you want me to help teach you how to do the live transcript stuff. Great. And uh, Anna, are you willing to stay on? I am. Um, I, I can stay on as well. It'll take like three minutes. Yeah. Um, okay, perfect. All right. Thanks, everyone.